Like a surfer. Hang loose. <laughs> got my party with my dog yesterday because this meant rock on. And I was like, no, it doesn't. And I got my party with a six year old about it. Oh, because it's how I do. Mm. Which I didn't even realize, dude, that it was actually like, I love you. I'm like really dumb for not realizing that. I just, I just learned that right now. My wife's like, you didn't know that? I was like, no, I had no idea. I didn't do this very much as a kid, but we got an exciting day. I got some stuff to share. I'm excited about these. We are gonna, um, actually, I'm gonna take Brandon, who's on the other side of the camera, through a uh, coaching consultation so you can see he, how, how much have you lost total, Brandon? Um, over 100 pounds. Okay, so over 100 pounds with one of the coaches on my staff, seeing that he's here with me all the time. Um, I'm gonna take things over, help him fix his knee. We're gonna document some of that. So you're gonna see how I'm gonna program for him to make sure his knee starts getting better, he starts building strength, and we're gonna lose another, how many pounds? Um, I don't know. Say it on YouTube, bro. Let's go for 60. Another 60 pounds. So, uh, but we got some cool stuff. So, um, the shoes came in, love them. So, the last episode of the YouTube videos that we shot, we were talking about um, getting new shoes. We went to Fleet Feet. So we'll put that up here so you guys can actually watch the episode where I went in there, tested my foot, um, both my feet, and I was shocked. My right foot had a high arch, left foot was flat. My right foot was a 0.6 inches bigger and had a fat heel compared to my 0.6 smaller foot and with a skinny heel. It was crazy, but it makes sense why I get like some hip pain and stuff. But these, so these are a size bigger. That's what they recommended, getting a full size bigger for your running shoes, which I was shocked by, but man, it is game changer. So um, I've been running these, they feel amazing, but, and honestly, the mint green looks really dope when you're running. These came in, look at that. Didn't come with my name on it, bro. Pretty sick, super feet. Oh yeah, I need to look. Did they do it? 3D printed insoles. Oh yeah, dude, they did do it. Dude, she didn't even say anything about it. Can you see it from the camera? Yeah, let me get it in focus. Sick. Forgot about that. Not that anybody will ever see it. <laughs> it's like, it, realistically, uh, fleet, fleet feet, you should have put it right here. Because then you see it every time you get in your shoes. But I'll take it. It's dope. So um, two different ones. I actually got to cut them. So I'm going to put my, my insole, current insole on these, and then I'll trace them because uh, I got to cut them down to fit my shoes. Uh, which we won't do today but you can kind of tell this arch is not that curved this one's pretty damn curved all right so it's a lot higher especially in the center it's a lot bigger than the other one um i do believe that the heel should be wider too so it might be hard to tell from the camera but this right one right here is going to be a little bit um bigger and it's probably got a Oh yeah, it definitely does. A way bigger bowl in the top of it for my heel to sit in because I got a fat heel on that side. Um, and this one's a little bit bigger. Or no, it wouldn't be bigger now until I cut it. So we'll see it. But these are these are sick. So they're custom to my feet. I'm gonna throw these in here soon. I just picked these up. Um, and I got four weeks until my half marathon. So I'm running eight miles on Saturday this week. Eight point seven, that'll be my longest one. Seven point five on Saturday that I just did. So here's another one. These samples came in. Choose hard socks. We're going to make a couple tweaks, make this a little smaller, bring it down. But we got that on the front. <laughs> TLRD strip in the back, which I'm pumped about. And then we did the, the black and yellow too, but these are, these came out a little orange. So we're going to brighten these up. And these have this double extra, like it's like a double layer cushion on the bottom. Perfect for training and running and stuff. I'm stoked. So we might actually do like our tailored yellow for the whole sock and then a black shirt with black writing and maybe drop them right before the high rocks competition. We have a bunch of people coming out of high rocks. I'm stoked. I have some clients. We got three people on my staff now doing it with me in Vegas. So I'm pumped about that. And uh, we're going to get into some training today for high rocks. So you're going to see how I'm training for that. But before we do that, we're going to go in the podcast room. We're going to mastermind some content and we are going to do a little console slash interview breaking down Brandon's fat loss plan and strength training for his knee, as well as like really realistically conditioning and strength training to fix his knee and get him racing the dirt bike better and better because that was a big goal. So when you lost hundred pounds, you're going to get a dirt bike, right? Yep. And I did my first race about two weeks ago. Wild. So 
We have uh, 60 more pounds of apparently to continue pushing the races and get on dirt bike. So we're gonna see how I'm gonna train him and all that. And that's the break 200. Yeah, that's wild, man. So from what, 360? 360 down to 200 pounds. That's the goal. And you're, uh, you went from 360 to 260. So, which we're gonna talk about because we ate a lot of Taco Bell recently, so. Yeah, puffed up a little bit. Yeah, so we're gonna go back to that. So let's get in that room and let's break down the plan. And then we'll start training later. We got a lot of mics. We got yeah. hot mics everywhere. It's a recording of a recording. I think that would be considered inception. I need to get some WD-40 soon. All right. Um, so the first thing, should we just intro this real quick? Sure. Be like a 30 we'll, we'll try to keep this to like 30 minutes and we got a high rocks training session to do so we got uh brandon clark in the house brandon welcome to the podcast welcome back to the podcast you've been on the Tito transformation podcast once correct uh yeah and then i've been on your podcast twice yeah um so you got a guest host and a guest a returning guest because i'm not actually the host of this podcast um, so Brandon's been on both podcasts multiple times. He is a client of the coaching method down a hundred pounds, um, back up a few pounds. And we're going to talk about that. And, um, but you've lost a hundred pounds with Brandon. Now you're transitioning to work with me for a while. Um, which is a combination of really just like trying to, to really break through and attack this next phase of your goal of losing another 60 for a total of 160 pounds. But also because you're my content guy, so you're here every week. Now's a good chance for us to document some of it, which is a really big motivating factor because, which I love that you even had the idea of doing this part because to me, what great accountability, you know? You have the accountability of me. You have the accountability of your own friends, family, following, but now, we're going to put you in front of Taylor coaching methods following my following and say, Hey, <laughs> we're going to document this journey. Um, starting with the eight week challenge that we're doing, try to lose the rest of the weight. But, um, why don't we start by brief synopsis of, of like the original goal to with the dirt bike kind of thing, you know, and, and how that has obviously happened. Um, give me that like chunk and then I'm going to kind of pick apart the last few weeks and we'll kind of tailspin into assessing and how I'm going to start programming for you and all that. Yeah, I guess. Um, I mean, you can go back and this is probably a good spot to plug some of those old podcasts, but uh, basically after COVID gained a ton of weight, dealt with sleep apnea to the point where I almost died. Um, well, I stopped breathing for over four minutes in my sleep study. Um, and then basically got up to 360 pounds. And I was like, I got to do something about this. And then um, that's when I reached out to you guys and then, through that, I took a medical leave of absence, and with my photography and filming, I stumbled into Supercross uh, during my medical leave of absence, and that's when I got the brilliant idea while I was losing weight of like, hey, I want to get a new dirt bike, and so I was going to get a trail bike once I lost 100 pounds, but then because of the Supercross and motocross thing, the athletes that I followed were like, dude, you got to go try racing, and I was like, oh, okay, cool, and then somehow I said yes to that, I guess, and um so I got down to 360 pounds and I got a Husqvarna FC 350. Hold on. You got down to... Sorry, 260 pounds. I was like, wait, I thought that yeah, was the top yeah, end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the okay. three, yeah, lost 100, 100 pounds. Um, and then I just started riding a bunch. And um, a lot of these guys have been super cool that race professionally and they've let me come out to their private tracks. And then... Um, there was this race at Washougal, which is the big pro national track here in Washington state. And so I went down there and I competed in the beginner class. And it was my first time ever racing a dirt bike on a track, even though I grew up riding dirt bikes. And it was a lot of work. My heart rate, I think, got up to like 188 beats a minute at one point in time. Um, I was out on the track for maybe 12 minutes and burned like over 350 calories. So it was pretty intense. The only bummer part about the whole weekend experience is that I partied it up and I drank quite a bit and I ate a lot of Taco Bell <laughs> and that pushed me up another yeah. 15, 15, 20 pounds, but we're quickly coming back. But 
The coolest part was I actually got all the way down to, I think, 253 pounds at one point. And um, I'll admit I was probably crash dieting then because I was like, oh, I just want to get under 250, yeah. under 250. And then I was just stuck, stuck for, and just like total mind fuck, yeah. total everything. Well, and you know what, man, too, like sometimes crash dieting works, obviously, and there's ways to potentially use crash dieting. But the thing I've noticed, too, is that when you crash diet, obviously, you're going to have a more radical um, I hate someone. I almost hate saying metabolic adaptation nowadays because it's just so overused. But you kind of have this like radical metabolic adaptation where your, me your metabolism slows down, obviously, but it creates those plateaus, you know, because it's quickly like, oh shit, and it's trying to stop and slow down and be more conservative with your energy output. Versus if you go the slow and steady route, maybe that adaptation doesn't happen as quick. Maybe you don't lose weight as quick, but it's way more likely you're going to keep seeing that weight loss progression because you have more energy to do more activity. You have a higher energy expenditure. You know what I mean? So, and for what you're doing now, I mean, especially if we're going to continue doing it, like you got to have energy. It's draining, you know, and you're not the first dirt biker I've worked with where like, I think people sometimes forget like it's a heavy bike you're standing you're gripping you're torquing it turning it like there's just so much involved that's not just like oh cool like you just sit down and hit the throttle oh this is not, not a moped yeah i mean this is not the nicest thing to say so i'm um, sorry if i offend people but the only time i've ever wanted to punch my mom in the face is when she <laughs> says riding a dirt bike is not exercise yeah i'm like you gotta be kidding me like <laughs> i literally almost die out there every yeah. single time oh yeah it's work um I, I in like I know it's it is, but like one that it's like snowmobiling. I completely underestimate until I like actually like I, I've never been riding, but I like had my my buddy had his out in his garage and I like went over and like just sat on. I was like, this thing is so heavy and it's so big. Like I can't imagine trying to like wheel that on a mountain. You know what I mean? Well, imagine if you grabbed a hex bar fully loaded. And you were trying to run sprints with it, but you also at the same time didn't put the clamps on the end. So meanwhile, the weights are like yeah. sliding around. Maybe one falls off and it gets like heavy on yeah. one side, but you're still trying to sprint. Juju, Juju Mufu shit. Yeah. Got like it, it's, you know? Yeah. It's like, it's, it's, I mean, it's intense. Massive weight loss already. Now we're embarking on the second part We're I'm really banking on trying to like harness your motivation of this second part you know i think there's like this it's almost like a second win in a way right you have this goal that you accomplish and then you have phase two of this goal you've already accomplished so much and some people would be like aren't you happy with that aren't you satisfied with that but you're not we want to push forward so now it's like okay you've spent the last couple weeks maybe a little bit more really just not paying too much attention. You've gained a little bit back. So real quick, how much weight have you gained back? So you went down to 260, lowest was 253, now you're up to? Well, so I got back up to 282 was the highest I got. Okay. But to, when I weighed in this morning, I was 267. Okay. Um, and so now I'm stepping in, we're gonna try to lose the last 100 pounds. Part of the reason I was stepping in is because you had um, some knee issues. Um, and we also wanna build some strength specifically for dirt biking so I, I would love to share a couple like just tips for people listening that have bad joints bad knees stuff like that i've had two knee surgeries i've worked with pro so a couple pro athletes that have had knee surgeries now i'm working with you that has some knee issues it's very common right so i want to kind of give some like just general guidelines of like information that's going to help anybody and just know that there's going to be certain things that i watch brandon do in this gym and i'm like ah okay we got to tweak this because i see him um, and this goes the same. I might not see him, but he leaves me a comment in true coach letting me know, Hey, this is bugging me when I do this. And I'm like, Oh, okay, cool. So it's coming from the medial side or it's coming from the lateral side. What do we need to work on? Um, but the first thing I did was look at your nutrition. So you kind of dial back in, um, before, uh, when you were dropping weight, your, your macros were somewhat low from what I looked at on your tracker, um, programmed wise, you didn't hit those perfectly this week. Um, so do you remember what those were off the top of your head? Um, it's like 175 grams of protein, about 100 grams of carbs, uh, 60 grams of fat, 25 grams. Of so, and this is a conversation I've had with a lot of people. I think you, I mean, you filmed so much content for me and you've been around me enough to where like you kind of, you probably see stuff and you're like, oh, okay, I kind of know why he's doing what he's doing. But I saw that and I immediately uh, went, took your calories. I brought you up to 250 grams of protein, which was an extra like 75 grams of protein. Um, 200 grams of carbs, which is actually hundred grams of carbs. And then I brought you to 65 grams of fat, which was just a little bit more fat. 
and 33 grams of fiber was purely because it's based on a percentage of your carbs is really in your calories is all it is because we're generally looking for like 10 to 15 grams per thousand calories is a good rule of fiber per thousand calories um so what i'm looking at this with is i'm like okay he went through a harsh cut you know he got a lot of weight loss then he took a intuitive diet break let's say which there's nothing wrong with it, it does like as much as it may have caused a little bit of extra weight gain after the cut it also resets you a little bit from a mental perspective and it's good for you and so even you taking that break one you you did gain a lot of awareness but also like even for somebody who's like okay well i'm not in this like deep dark hole what can i take away from that well what you can take away from it is if you push too hard for too long it's only a matter of time before you blow up let's say or snap or or fall apart in some way shape or form and so what we try to do with a lot of our clients is be proactive by asking the right questions so that i can sense when it's coming and go hey we're gonna take a diet break I'm like no i'm doing well and i'm like no we're gonna take a diet break because i'm not gonna let you get to the point where it's too late you taking that period of time was actually really, really good like i was happy about that because now we have a fresh slate to start from and we can do it in a certain way but i also know that like one of the ways I'm approaching this with you is that I want to attack the fat loss goal first with creating as much movement and energy expenditure as possible. A lot of people frown upon like you should, you should create the deficit through your diet, not through cardio. And in some regards, I totally agree because it's more accurate. It's more guaranteed to work. Your body doesn't adapt to it as quick. Some people adapt to cardio really well, but you come to me like, I want to be strong. I want to be a, a jacked, which I put in your report. Goal. I don't know if you saw that, but like, I want to be the jacked, I put it in quotes, the jacked photographer guy. Like, I, like, how do we create that? Well, we have to move a lot. We have to train a lot. And how do we get really great at riding dirt bikes? Yeah, right, ride dirt bikes a lot. Well, how do we create body armor essentially to handle the falls, handle the tension, the isometric strength? We got to train a lot. And I want to do conditioning and push you to that level. So to me, I'm like, hey, let's bump up calories a bit. I'm bumping up protein quite a bit because protein is not going to store as fat going to be the most satiating nutrient you can eat it also is going to allow us to increase your calories without storing any fat they're yet to find any mechanism for the body to store protein as body fat we can eat a ton of it and until the point where you're just like abnormally gassy from protein like we're good you know and this amount's not gonna like i eat 240 grams of protein i don't need that much i'm 175 pounds so bump the protein way up it can be good for your metabolism good for maintaining muscle building muscle I want carbs to be high because I know that's going to fuel your performance. And I will, we're testing the 2K run. We're going to start implementing some of these conditioning metrics, and I'm going to start adding tests into those as well. Like we'll probably do a like a calorie test for the assault bike. So blank amount of calories, how fast can you get done? Um, like the 100 calorie test is it's so miserable. It's brutal. So I'm just going to warn you now. But we're doing these things so we can test those metrics as well. And my goal with you is to kind of chase the fat loss goal through moving more performance. Um, and having fun through those metrics, right? And then also fixing your knee. If we, if we diet you super hard or add a ton of cardio for walking, which is one of the first things I told you, stop walking so much. So we're implementing training, which I can get to in a sec too, um, to help improve your knee, so that we don't bust it on the bike, but also all these performance metrics continue to go up and your knee feels better. Cause you know, at the end of the day, What's the point of losing weight if like if you lose much weight and you're frail and feel like shit and your knee hurts worse and you can't dirt bike because you're too weak? What is the point? Like you, I've actually had two knee surgeries, not three, but two meniscus, one ACL. I didn't have to have surgery on the ACL though. But working on that, um, we're working on a lot of hamstring stuff. Like I told you, we're still going to be implementing like stiff like deadlifts and stuff. A lot of people think so much about their quads when they have knee issues, but they don't realize that the hamstring tendons support the knee so much. And if we can actually create less tension on the quads, the quad will pull, especially the rectus femoris, will stop pulling on the tibia in the front of your kneecap. There's less tension, there's less tightness in all the tissues around your knee. And we're just building up the hamstrings, which support you way more when you're walking and running and jumping and stuff like that. So we're trying to like alleviate that tension, work on some stability, um, and just slowly build the strength of everything around it. Cause like, you know, you said you have arthritis. So to an extent, there's almost nothing we can do. We can lose weight, so there's less weight and tension on the knee. We can eat better, because eating better will lower inflammation, which will help the arthritis. It doesn't cure it, but it's gonna stop it from hurting so much. Implementing good nutrition, fish oil, things that are gonna help, olive oil, blueberries, ginger, like there's so many anti-inflammatory nutrients that can get squeezed in the diet that do help. But for the most part, we wanna lose weight. We wanna create strength in everything around it, especially in that posterior chain. 
um, and just alleviate that tension on the knee. Right now, just like to, to cap this out, we're, we're tracking macros, daily weight, sleep, daily steps, um, a couple bio feedback markers. Um, again, two days of cardio. I put you at a gallon of water a day because I want you drinking a lot of water. Um, that's gonna help with inflammation, all that stuff. Trying to chase like a 1% weight loss per uh, of total weight per week. So, you know, this week, or in your tracker, you should be losing 2.6, 2.7 pounds. Um, and we're just gonna keep kind of inching down. And um, yeah, I don't know. Do you have anything else you want to add? I mean, for the most part, like I said, we're going through kind of a primer phase, which I, I don't want to drop your calories super low. If anything, I want to increase your energy expenditure through activity and strength training and hopefully maybe even bump your carbs up a little bit because we're fueling that before we ever even consider dropping your calories down, which I think more people can be successful with than they realize if they're just patient or so anxious to get into a deficit. I'm like, hey, let's not do that for a little bit and optimize you before we go that route and things will be way easier. Okay. Anyway, we'll wrap this up here. I, I'm excited to have you back on in six months to talk about that. And uh, like I said, we'll, we'll have to do the choose hard one soon too, because that's going to be fun for that podcast. And now everybody's listening to this. They're going to know that the podcast is, has changed from the Taylor Life podcast to the choose hard podcast. Is, so, there, is there a way to do a poll? I just want to know, should I start a YouTube channel about this? I like that. If there's a poll in this podcast, as you're listening it to it, it's going to say, should Brandon start a YouTube channel to document his weight loss journey? And uh, if you want to see some of it right now, we're doing a little bit of it so far on my YouTube channel, but f I think it would be dope to do a full thing, you know, especially if it keeps you accountable of it too. And it might be one of those things that it just like after the weight loss happens, it blows up, you know, people can go back and watch it. All right, guys, if you enjoyed that podcast, make sure you leave it a five-star rating review. If you know anybody who needs to improve their health, you need to know anybody who needs to have a transformation themselves, needs some motivation, needs some inspiration from real life people who have chosen hard, transformed their body, and done the work that a lot of people won't do to change their life, please, please, please share this with that person. We know there's people out there that need to hear these kind of stories, and we just want you to help us share these stories to, to continue our mission of reaching more people. Thank you guys for listening. We'll catch you next time. I wanted to do a really cool smooth transition to the next scene. <laughs> <laughs> Try to be a YouTuber, bro. All right. Let's see what's going on. Um, podcast is done. Check out Taylor Transformations podcast where we interview all of our clients. I don't know about you. I wasn't planning on doing a 45 minute podcast, but that was sick. Really, really good podcast. It's going to go out on that one. Um, and then we're going to do another one for my podcast, Choose Hard. But now we are going to go train so i did a two and a half easy run this morning which was wild because my pace was less than eight minutes and 30 seconds it was like eight just over eight minutes two and a half miles i just crushed it i feel like i'm adapting super well i haven't ran this well really ever in my life because i never actually tried but um feeling really solid so i have an eight mile run this weekend so that'll be my longest run today before the half marathon but today we have more of like a high rock style strength and conditioning session. So I'm still lifting four days a week, full body. Um, but now we're starting to integrate as of this week, some of these more like circuit style, high rocks kind of prep workouts. Um, in fact, today in a, about an hour, hour and a half after we get done here, I have a guy coming to uh, buy like my Smith machine because one, I'm preparing to move and I'm not gonna take all this stuff with me, but two, I need to get an assault runner. So I have one of those curved assault runners coming in. I got to get something for the wall ball because I got to prep for these specific exercises. So we're going to make do today with what I do have and uh, do a strength training session preparing me for high rocks, which I'm competing in February 1st. Let's get it. We got some shoes. Forgot I don't have shoes on. All right. This is going to be... Truthfully, like I was hoping to have more time to train because I, my hip is tired from running, but I don't got the time. So I'll have to like foam roll and stuff at home, maybe take a cold plunge tonight. Today we got a conditioning circuit and then we're just going to do some repeats on the rower. So I do not have my assault runner yet. I think it's going to get here like next week. So I'm going to just replace that with the sled. But basically right now we have a quick kind of uh, mock session. It's a shorter it's a shorter conditioning session essentially. So this is gonna be like, think of it like a mock high rock. So when we look at high rocks, you have thousand meter run, then you have like a 50 meter, and it's not in this order, 50 meter sled push, thousand meter run, 100 wall balls, thousand meter run, 50 meter sled pull, thousand meter run, farmer's walk. And you just keep kind of going back and forth between these things. 
Um, so this circuit is 500 meters run. I'm going to do sled instead since I don't have the assault runner yet. Farmers carry 50 meters, which is about down and back on the turf. Burpee, uh, broad jump, 50 meters so that's down and back. And then wall ball for 25. Because I don't have a wall ball thing, I'm just going to probably go pretty damn light and just hope it doesn't bust the drywall or something. But the point is I'm going through those and I'm doing way less. So 500 meter runs instead of 1,000 meters. This is to get a base. This is week one. So it's just getting a base of the movements, of the time, of me kind of pacing myself. And the goal is to go from a higher intensity with a lower volume and shift it to a higher volume, either at a lower intensity, but realistically trying to maintain that intensity. So anybody trying to progress something like for high rocks, if you really think about it, it's doing anaerobic movements at an aerobic pace. Doesn't really make sense, right? Wall ball is explosive. Sled is super heavy. Like we're doing these short sprint style things, but we're supposed to do it for a really long period of time. So what we want to do is start with the sprint, less distance, so 500 meters instead of 1,000, 25 instead of 100, that kind of element, harder, heavier, faster, shorter, and then we try to get really proficient at that intensity or load and then extend the duration you're able to maintain that with. Same idea as being able to do five reps of 225 pounds and over time keep accumulating reps until you can do 15 reps with 225 pounds. Same exact thing. So we're just periodizing this over the long haul. This is week one. Um, so it's going to get a lot more intense, a lot more. Um, all the sessions are going to get longer and uh, worse. But we're going to get right into it. So we're going to start with the circuit. We're just doing three rounds today, which is going to be an easy day, which is going to be nice. Lace up. And play some music.
uh, had to walk, farmers walk inside down back twice. I read the numbers wrong when I first spoke. Whew. So I did a little bit extra that compared to what I said, but that was like 12 minutes. High rocks will be like an hour. <laughs> oh, that sucked. But this is why I'm starting to train now. Oh, okay. So we had 100 meter sled push slash pull. I split it up because you do both at high rocks. 100 meter farmer's carry with, so this is going back to what I said before about having a higher intensity with a lower volume in the beginning and periodizing in a way that your volume accumulates with either less intensity or a static intensity as you build your work capacity and ability to do more of it. For me, some of these are gonna lower. So those are each 10 pounds. So 22 kilograms heavier than you're supposed to lift for the farmer's carry. Um, the guys are doing 24 kilogram bells. Those are 62 pounds, which is like 30, maybe 28 kilograms. So it's about 10 pounds heavier on each side. The slide is supposed to be 200, 220 pounds or something like that, because I was think it was 104 kilograms. So 220 pounds, basically. A little bit more than that, 228 pounds, I think. That is, what is that? Um, 90, 180. Okay, so that's about right. It's a little bit more. No, that's almost a dead on, 225 pounds, plus the sled, they don't count sled. If you can see in the video, my turf isn't glued down, so it wrinkles as you go which I shouldn't have done. And there's pads underneath it. My last gym, we glued it to the cement so it wouldn't move at all, but there was no pads, gym mats at all underneath. So anytime you kneeled, did sit-ups, fell, it just hurt. It's like pure garage cement. So that adds a pretty hefty resistance because it just does not want to slide. But yeah, I don't know how heavy the wall ball is supposed to be. I didn't look, but that crushed me but in a good way, three rounds for time. Now I have a time to base things off of and I can start progressing from. Now we're gonna hit the rower, do some repeats on there, 500 meters, sustainable pace. So really moderate intensity, trying to stay around like a zone two, aerobic zone, 70% of max heart rate and just be proficient is really it. So we're gonna hit that and then call it a day. Oh. Feel good when you're going. Let me stop. That's how out of breath you are. Oh, I'm tired. Tomorrow's a rest day, complete rest day, and I'm happy for it. Okay, so three rounds of a high rock style mock up kind of circuit, sled push pull. Farmer's carry, burpee broad jump, wall ball, three rounds, heavier weights, going really fast, lower rep counts just to get a good base. We'll progress that by adding rounds to it. And then we'll drop weight to match what is actually in the High Rocks event, what I need to use there, and begin to progress the reps. So basically imagine, Going three rounds, four rounds, five rounds, then lowering in weight and adding more reps to the wall ball, more distance for the burpee broad jump to be able to go a further duration. So by the time Hyrox comes, the duration I need to go is easy, right? 500 meter repeats on the rower. This 
probably isn't going to progress. We're going to try to progress the pace. So my, you know, per 100, 200 meter pace for the duration of the 500 meters for five rounds, two minute rest period between, and just trying to keep holding a better pace and just keep it there. Doing this again with running on my other circuit day. So we're going to keep blending this stuff in to the, until we get to high rocks. I'm still, what is this? This is September. So October, November, December, January, February. We're still five months out, four and a half, five months. So plenty of time. We'll be doing this a few days a week. Got about a month to my half marathon. So we're running, running every week, four or five days a week, progressing that. That'll stay steady. So a lot more endurance than I've ever done, but my calories keep going up because I need more carbs for this. I'm actually dropping a little bit of weight, getting a little bit leaner, which is nice too. So we'll keep pushing. We got a bunch of people coming out to High Rocks with us to, to compete. I'm excited. If you're going to be at High Rocks in Vegas, let me know. We'd love to meet you. Love to meet up with our clients and members that are coming out there too, making some custom gear. I'm going to go eat and chill. We'll see you guys next time.